Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the media. Uh, the Honorable Premier David Burt, JP MP, will address the nation. Good afternoon, everybody. I will start today's press conference with a topic that I know that many would like to know more about, and that is the status of on-island testing for COVID-19. Following that, I will give an overview of an update from an EMO meeting held earlier today, and we'll discuss matters related to self-quarantine and also to requirements that are for social distancing in the country. I am pleased to announce that on-island testing for COVID-19 has commenced, and they are being provided with a maximum 48-hour turnaround for results here on island. This is a significant step and is a partnership between the Ministry of Health, Helix Laboratories, and the Rebuta Hospitals Board, and I'm certain that this is relieving news for the community. The Ministry of Health is currently being guided by Public Health England and the Pan-American Health Organization every step of the way. In the past week, we have known, or the past few weeks, there has been an increasing demand for on-island testing. But I think it is prudent to remind people to be guided by science and international evidence-based best practice and not to be swept into panic buying of inaccurate test results. The Ministry of Health is to be commended for securing this capability, which will, which will certainly speed the government's ability to detect any community spread which may be taking place on island. I understand, as per the update that the Minister of Health gave to the EMO meeting, that samples were collected yesterday um, in the hospital. They were uh, started to be processed. Um, earlier today, and the processing will finish tomorrow, and hopefully we will have results on Saturday. Oh, sorry, on Sunday. What is important, however, and as I mentioned, when we are speaking about panic and where people get into panic buying, there are. I want to make sure that we caution members of the public against purchasing COVID-19 point-of-care blood tests, which promise instant results in only a few minutes. The Ministry of Health is unaware of any validated rapid point of care tests for COVID-19 that have been independently scientifically validated to give reliable results. The use of non-validated testing can produce a false negative result, which could lull people into a false sense of security and can unconsciously lead to more spreading of COVID-19. The public are reminded that the testing criteria for Remuda is guided by the World Health Organization and will be updated if and when that particular guidance is updated. This does mean that not every single person in Bermuda will be eligible to be tested for COVID-19, as we know that there is limited testing supply in Bermuda. The guidance that is going to be followed is from the World Health Organization. However, the Ministry of Health may be testing people who may be who may have been exposed to um, who, who may have been exposed to persons who have tested positive to COVID-19. It's important to note that there are currently only 150 tests that are on island. However, the total order that was initially placed was 950. The additional 800 tests are expected to arrive on the island over the next two weeks. In addition, the ministry has placed another order, an additional order, to make sure that there is even increased testing capacity as we go forward over the next few weeks. Again, this is a significant step. I'd like to thank the Minister of Health and her team for working to get us to this particular point where we can certainly diagnose these matters a lot quicker here on island. Now for an update from the EMO. Earlier today, the EMO met to get a full assessment from its public and private sector members. Again, with the docks, we continue to receive goods in the island and we have normal cargo operations. As can be seen, the docks were floated and fresh produce was being delivered to stores today. Regarding the airport, as of 11.59 tonight, 
the LF Wade International Airport will close for scheduled commercial passenger flights. In conjunction with the U.S. Council General, a Delta Airlines flight will arrive in Bermuda tomorrow afternoon, bringing some returning residents and U.S. citizens wishing to return to the United States may also catch this flight back to the United States tomorrow. That is a Delta flight. Also, yesterday, the Canadian consulate contacted our office to ask permission for a WestJet plane to arrive in Bermuda on Sunday. Their intention was this to be come to Bermuda as a ferry, so it will become Bermuda empty, and return with Canadian citizens who may wish to endure uh, this current global pandemic inside of their country of citizenship or residence. Um, we made the request that given that there still may be some Bermudians in Canada, that we extend the, the opportunity for Bermudians who may be in Canada to return as well. Therefore, they have accepted that request, and I'm pleased to announce that at 2 o'clock p.m. on Sunday, the 22nd of March, WestJet 2710 will depart from Toronto, Canada, bound for Bermuda, and is scheduled to depart that evening, Sunday evening, at 6.32 p.m. to return to, to Toronto. Um, and what I would note is that certainly any persons who um, are watching this uh, live or listening live should make sure that they notify their friends and family who may either be looking for flights from the United States or flights uh, from Canada to be aware of these and to make those arrangements so they can get back home should they wish. There are five flights coming in today with returning residents and customs and public health officers will follow the same self-quarantine protocols that were in place yesterday for returning residents. Last evening, the Minister of National Security, Wayne Keynes, went to the airport to observe the process, and by all accounts, that process was a smooth one. I would like to thank the Royal Bermuda Regiment for their critical assistance in helping to maintain the social distance of arriving passengers. We did see some of the social media from Wednesday or early arrivals in the week where there were a lot of persons that were uh, crowded into spaces. That did not happen last evening, and it's important that we maintain social distancing the entire time, and as it's something that we're trying to make sure that we enforce in the public, it's also important to make sure that it is enforced during that particular arrival process. Uh, regarding the government, we will be releasing a full list of government departments that are fully open, that are partially open, or that are not operational at all. And these particular matters will be reviewed. Members of the media can expect that shortly after this press conference, but it is an extensive list, and I'm not going to take the time to go through every single government department, but it will be able to uh, be posted on your various sites. However, uh, the post office will be, um, uh, as of one today, all post office locations have closed, and no local mail is currently being processed. Regarding public transportation, recognizing that public transportation has been suspended for now and that we have a number of health professionals who use public transportation, the Department of Public Transportation will put on a special pickup service for our key health workers, such as nurses, health technicians, and caregivers, and those details would be shared as finalized. The public was, announced, was advised earlier today all essential services within the Department of Works and Engineering are currently operating normally. And this includes the public access to the Tynes Bay Waste to Energy Facility. We do understand that there are some challenges with trash collection currently. It is expected that trash collection will continue to operate normally, but the Minister of Public Works is currently at a meeting at the Marsh Folly uh, uh, facility, and I'll be providing a more detailed update on that when we are able to do so. It is important to note when it comes to the issue of public transportation and the decisions of which the government made when it came to the suspension of education and other matters. Given that we did not have on-island testing capability here, we took decisions out of abundance of caution to ensure that there was no possibility of community spread here on island. Now that we have testing capability on island, we can better assess what the uh, potential community spread is, and we will be re-examining any potential public services that may be able to restart it at a limited basis based upon where we stand currently. 
However, those decisions will only be made based upon the available evidence and dealing with the testing that we have here on island. Regarding the Department of Education, I want to emphasize to all our school leaders and educators the important role they play in keeping our children engaged while schools are currently closed due to the ongoing pandemic. As teachers and school staff engage students in remote learning experiences, it will keep our students focused on learning and off the streets. All school staff are expected to engage students in remote learning experiences during the entire week of March 23rd using a variety of online learning platforms. This method of learning is aligned with 21st century practices and also supports the Ministry of Health's COVID-19 guidelines of heightening social distancing and government's call for national participation in this regard. The main objective during school closures are ensuring a quality learning experience for students, maintaining routines similar to school routines, and providing ongoing communication to students, parents, and other school staff. Now, it is also important to note that parents have a role to play in this as well. And it, as someone had commented to me earlier today, and I'll get to that later when we're talking about the importance of social distancing, that the city of Hamilton looked like it was cup match. I'm uncertain if members of the public are understanding that how serious this situation has the potential to be. None of us want to see what has taken place inside of other countries to happen here. And I will go into the strict social distancing guidelines, which will soon be issued by the government and will be enforceable under the various Public Health Act and Quarantine Acts. However, I want to also state that we recognize that inside of our school system, there are uh, parents who are frontline workers and essential services who may have those uh, particular services disrupted because their children are in school. And so what I would say, um, and have their children in school. So what I would say in this particular um, circumstance is that we are also looking through the Department of Education to provide minor services uh, for uh, persons who may uh, be frontline workers to see if we can provide limited services to make sure that those are handled. Finally, it is important to reemphasize the important messages from the Ministry of Health regarding social distancing and self-quarantine. We stress that if you have traveled from a country with local transmission of COVID-19, and that is all of our gateway jurisdictions, you are required to self-quarantine for 14 days. Self-quarantine is used to prevent the possible spread of COVID-19. And it means that a person, even if you have those symptoms, must stay in their home or accommodation and must maintain their distance from others. It is important to note that these quarantine measures are now enforceable under public health regulations, which have been gazetted today. The measure of self-quarantine is an important and significant step to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Enforceable penalties include a fine up to $6,000 for the first offense and for a second offense up to $10,000 or imprisonment for three months. This is something that is serious, and it is essential that members of the public protect Bermuda by observing their self-quarantine. If you are quarantined, you must not leave your house. This means that you should not go to work, you should not visit seniors, you should, attend, you should not attend church or church meetings, go to the grocery stores, certainly not attend a party, go to the movies, attend funerals, or go to the beach, visit restaurants, or even to the gas station. The only way that Bermuda is going to remain protected from what other countries are seeing if self-quarantine is strictly followed, and all of us have a role to play. It is not a joke if you have returned overseas and you think that it's okay to possibly slip out. You may, even though you're not exhibiting symptoms, be able to be passing on this disease, and what may happen is that may be transmitted to seniors 
in our community unwittingly and can cause persons serious health issues. This is not a joke, and everybody in this country has a role to play when it comes to that. I recognize that clearly these are extremely difficult and uncomfortable circumstances, but these steps are being taken to preserve life on island. The government will also be releasing a series of items which came from the Department of Public, uh, sorry, the Ministry of Health, uh, speaking about the public health guidelines and social distancing guidelines. What is important is that there is new news that is going to be made today, speaking about the items, the, um, the businesses which will be asked to close their operations for the time being. And those are operations which can certainly uh, speed the spread of any community transmission of COVID-19. So I want to make sure that this is made clear. Restaurants and dine-in restaurants were able to remain open with social distancing. They are to keep tables at a minimum of one meter away with a maximum of 50 people. Now, this is important to note. If your restaurant cannot keep people one meter away and it's a dine-in, the maximum of 50 is for a large space, but that is the total maximum. If your space is smaller, that does not mean that you can put 50 people into a small space. It is important to note that these items and the following businesses can be enforced under regulations and enforcement officers will request businesses to close if they are not following these regulations. It makes sense for companies to follow the regulations versus them being ordered to be shut down by the Minister of Health. Going forward, and this is particularly important, pools, and this is inside of hotels, pools will be asked to close. Gyms inside of hotels will be closed. Bars, indoors, and outdoors will be a maximum of 15 persons with social distancing of one meter or three feet. We will recognize that there are powers to close liquor license establishments. If liquor license establishments are not following the social distancing rules, they will be ordered to close. So it is up to business owners whether or not they want to enforce social distancing or if they want to voluntarily close or if they will be closed by uh, government authorities. Gyms will be asked at this point in time to close. Beauty salons and barbers will be at this time asked to close. Church services and weddings at this point in time will be asked to not take place. And funeral services are allowed with social distancing. However, it will be a maximum of 10 persons indoor, indoors and graveside services can be held outdoors with appropriate social distancing. Bars and clubs outside of hotels Social clubs, bars, and nightclubs will be a maximum of 15 persons with social distancing of at least one meter or three feet. That means if you have music playing inside of a bar and persons are closer than one meter or three feet, you have, you have the possibility of being shut down and your liquor license being temporarily suspended. This is not a joke. We all have a role to play. We will be releasing the full social distancing guidelines, but those are the new business regulations which will be coming into place and which will be enforceable underneath the Public Health Act, underneath the name of the Minister of Health. What is important to note is that we are watching and learning from other nations on how to tackle this pandemic. And despite the dreadful developments that we've witnessed in some countries, there are also pockets of good news. For example, earlier this week, we saw that China closed down its last special COVID-19 hospital as there were not enough new cases to support them. In South Korea, the number of new cases has been declining. And even here in Bermuda, the two positive imported cases were never hospitalized and themselves are recovering. So if we follow the instructions and rules, if we all do our part, we can make sure that we are a success story and not a story that is covered for the wrong reasons. However, I want everyone to know, business owner, person of faith, communities of faith, persons inside the community, all of us have a role to play. 
and the government, with the new regulations that were issued today, will not hesitate to ensure that these regulations are in force. It is a responsibility of all of us to keep our country safe, and I am going to ask that everyone police themselves, police their neighbors, encourage each other, and let us get through this particularly pandemic together. United, Bermuda is strong, and I expect us to continue united so that we can come through this particular pandemic, this particular pandemic, strong and ready to have a next chapter of our history. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to take any questions that members of the media may have. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, uh, thank you, Premier. Uh, as was indicated previously by the Premier, my days are rolling in two days ago, perhaps. There were two positive tests immediately following the um, acquisition of those results. The public health team started to make what we refer to as contact tracing, which is where they contact first and foremost the family members of those individuals and then their outside groups, such as their workmates, et cetera. There were 18 persons in total for the two persons that tested positive. All of those persons have um, been contacted and have been provided with public health information. None of them exhibited any symptoms or having any challenges. Uh, as the Premier indicated, the two individuals that have tested positive have made uh, full recoveries. They only had very mild symptoms and did not require any type of hospitalization. Their doctors treated them and that was the extent of the, um, uh, the matter. Those 18 people, we know that the virus tends to be asymptomatic for at least 10 days. Were they still tested? Those, those 18 persons, uh, the, one of the persons that tested positive arrived f over 14 days ago and the other one was 16 days ago and the other one was 14 days ago. Um, however, as it relates to the actual testing themselves, there are, as the Premier indicated, we do have a minimal amount of tests. Normally we test persons that are, have symptoms because if you test somebody that's asymptomatic, then the results can be what's called a false negative or false positive, which could be detrimental because a person could be informed that they do not have it when it, in fact they do because there's no antibody that's in their system at the time of the testing. How many people were tested uh, so far today? I gave that information to the EMO today. Um, I, 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 it was 6 a.m. that they were, I'm not sure. I'm not, I can't provide that information, but there, the main thing that the Premier indicated is that um, having now the ability to do PCR rapid testing on island, we do not have the requirement to send it to CARFA, which is the four to five day turnaround. So I think that's the main point. So there have been some persons that are actually being tested in the running of the test now with the expectation that the results will be received um, on Sunday. Um, as a result of the, that's um, quite a couple hundred people self-quarantining, as you know, who have arrived on Ida. Um, have, have any of them uh, been tested? Uh, there are, I don't have the, the, the numbers in front of me. If you look at the website, because we've got on the website how many people have been tested daily, so that's probably the best source of information, because I don't have the number, and I would just be speaking from the top of my head. Sure. Um, also, I suppose there's been two strains of the virus identified, the L and the S strain. Have you been able to identify which strain those passengers were, were uh, positive for? I don't have that information with me now. Um, with regards to um, the fines and offenses for people breaking self-quarantine, um, how, how would that be police or cop uh, patrol? Uh, we're, we're <clears throat> we are still working through those processes. We do know that the Act makes it abundantly clear that there is a process. We have people that are coming in on the flights tonight 
if there are people that are seeing in the public, and it is clear from, we have a list of everyone that should be quarantined when they, when they arrive on island. We're giving a list and we take and we keep all that information of people that are on, in that list. If it is, if information comes to us and, and it is known that people are outside when they should be inside and they are on the list of the quarantine people, then we have the opportunity to make a formal police complaint and that matter will be worked through the chain as any normal police complaint will be uh, worked through the chain and it will follow through the normal process. Mm -hmm. Um, there's uh, quite a few tourists you walking around today in town, out and about. Um, do, do you feel that this self-quarantine should apply to everybody, not just those who have totally traveled? If anyone has come into the country, and they have been ordered to self-quarantine, we believe that, that, that they should follow that process. This is not an opportunity, though, for anyone to um, engage in any vigilantism. Uh, we will make sure that the right process is in place, and at the appropriate time, we will make that, that known to the public. We're, we're simply asking for everyone to honor the terms and conditions of, of the quarantine as set out. If I may, as well. Um, and Jasmine, I think this is important. It's important, as the minister said, to not engage in vigilante and not to make assumptions. Persons who may have arrived may have arrived before uh, quarantine and may be leaving on flights this evening uh, and the last flights out or maybe on the flights uh, tomorrow or the flights that have arranged on Sunday. So it's important to note that. But as the minister says, we do have a full docket of all the persons who are on quarantine. Those persons are from the public health monitoring side have been called and have been contacted uh, to monitor of their public health and their clients that list is an extensive list of persons and what was given to the Minister of National Security on Wednesday at the EMO meeting was to make sure that the regiment and or police can be used to assist in making sure that home uh, self quarantine is enforced today there are now penalties for violating that quarantine and we are going to expect that Bermudians will do their part to keep this country safe and I'm expecting parents of students returning are going to do their part to make sure their children are doing their part. I'm going to expect neighbors to do their part to make sure everyone has to do their part and that is what is most important. This is not a joke. And if we want Bermuda to end up, as we've seen in other places, either on a complete and total lockdown, which has serious social ramifications and serious economic ramifications, or if we want to see us with serious health issues, then we will ignore what is happening. So no, it is not funny if you are on self-quarantine that you decide to break it. Understand, you are putting your granny at risk. Do not do it. Stay home, stay home, stay home. Uh, there were discussions earlier about setting up a quarantine center. So mm -hmm. there were discussions with the local hoteliers. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give us any update? I don't want to necessarily state quarantine centers. I think what is particularly important is that when uh, the home quarantine, uh, the self-quarantine was announced, uh, there were some persons when returning residents were coming home that were fearful that they did not have the place inside of their residence to ensure that they could effectively self-quarantine given the guidelines of which were issued by public health. We view that as a problem to solve. Yesterday, that problem was handed over to the Minister of National Security, and that problem was solved. So persons that were coming home last night and persons that came home today, persons who may be coming on the Delta flight tomorrow or on the flights on, on Sunday, if they do not have the appropriate facilities at their home to self-quarantine, there will be alternate accommodation that will be provided for them. So I don't want them to say quarantine facilities because that's not the type of thing in which we're setting up. We're not requiring everyone to get off a plane and to go in a certain place. But in the interest of making sure that we can effectively enforce and, effective, and have an effective self-quarantine for those particular persons, we are providing that particular option. And I'm grateful for the hotel partners and the Bermuda Hotel Association for working with us in that endeavor. Uh, can you say uh, where these uh, areas will be and uh, how many spaces are available? I will not say that. I'm, uh, that was part of the agreement. We're not going to start broadcasting hotel facilities, et cetera. What I will say is that I am grateful that all parts of Bermuda are working together to ensure that we can make it through uh, this particular difficult stage of our time. But we will have the capacity for persons who we, which we need. We are comfortable with that. All right. Now, uh, uh, those mentioned at the airport, there was uh, some uh, I'd like to create a conflict with the um, customs recently. I understand there was a meeting this morning. You can help me on how discussions between government and the unions and the workers have been going. Thanks, sir. Discussions with 
the union and the Department of Customs are ongoing. As we say, they have, the customs officers have legitimate concerns. Our department has, has heard the concerns. The ministry has heard the concerns. We are in the process of making, um, so the, the, one of the main challenges is the arrival counter. The arrival counter needs to have some sort of fabrication to protect uh, the uh, customs officers. We have spoken to the Ministry of Health. They have given us clear guidelines, and they have shared with us that we believe everything that we've done with social distancing, putting the, uh, putting the, when the, Arrivals come to make sure that there's specific uh, distance behind the customs officers having gloves and other uh, equipment. We believe that we're doing everything possible to protect them. We are going a further step to allay any fears in the not too distant future to make sure that we have covering over the top. But speaking with the minister with responsibility for health, she has assured me that, th that we are doing everything in our power to make sure that they are protected. Any update on the discussions with the corrections officers? The, at, at, at the same time, yesterday we issued clear guidelines for, um, for uh, the corrections officers. They too have been given some, some guidelines. We believe that as well, if they, have the, if they follow the, the uh, cleaning regimes, if they wear the appropriate uh, gear, that we indeed believe that they will be safe. These are ongoing talks. We want to make sure that everybody understands, number one, we are taking this seriously. We will continue to try to, we will continue to make these environments as safe as possible for all of the people within our ministry. Um, I think this will go back to the Premier. Um, obviously, this uh, pandemic is going to have an impact both economically and socially. Um, can you say what the government is doing to help mitigate those impacts? That's an excellent question. And can I say something which I think is important? Everyone in this country is concerned about our economy. But if people are not following social distancing guidelines, the economy will get worse. I cannot emphasize this enough. What we have seen take place in other parts of the world is due to people not following social distancing guidelines. If we follow social distancing guidelines appropriately, if we make sure that everyone is being serious about this, then we will not have to suffer the severe negative economic consequences that we've seen around the world. And that is something that has to be made very clear and people have to understand this is not a joke. I will not hesitate to act to do what has been done in other places to shut down the entire country for a period of 14 days if I feel it's necessary. But that will cause incredible pain and economic pain inside of this country. So what do we do? Right now, we have on-island testing. Right now, we can see the scale of the problem. Right now, we can diagnose the scale of the problem. But in the meantime, we have to take sensible measures. So what I want to make sure that we all understand is if we do not follow the rules, we will be worse off not only health-wise, but also regarding our economy. Bail us out regarding what? Assist us if, um, should, should we need health and extra testing kits in, in dealing with this, just will they be available as mm -hmm. folks are asking? So you can be clear, and that's why I just want to thank the Ministry of Public Health. And this is not to throw anyone under the bus, but this is to recognize and understand that everyone is dealing with a global shortage of testing kits. There have been requests in to Public Health England for testing kits, for assistance, for other particular equipment that is necessary that has not only come in from us, but that's coming from the other overseas territories. And it has yet to be made available. The government of Bermuda is making sure that we take all contingencies and we are not relying on other people to do what we can do ourselves. The Ministry of Health worked. We now have on-island testing. We are grateful for the consultation that Public Health England is doing remotely to help us to set it up. But we are going to continue to acquire what we need and we are not going to wait for someone else for us to be in charge of our own destiny. If we would have been waiting for others, we would not have on-island testing right now. Last one, uh, there's a case yesterday mentioned, um, I guess there were talks of uh, certain numbers of Bermudians on cruise ships that were looking to get back home. Mm -hmm. Is this perhaps an idea of how many people there are and I guess where we are with mm -hmm. home? 
Um, happy to uh, discuss that particular point. That's something that is being handled uh, with government house as they are in uh, foreign jurisdictions. There are some Bermudians that are on cruise ships. Um, of course, we recognize that with the um, cruise industry, there are a lot of cruises that are being denied entry uh, to particular ports. Um, so that matter continues to be worked on. Um, I think that we'll be happy to give an update at some point in time um, in the future. But what I do know is that matter is being actively managed with Government House um, to make sure that we can find a way to get those persons repatriated to Bermuda. It is going to be a difficult process. It is going to be a long process. And it is not something that is lost in the government. So it's something that we're getting updated on on a regular basis. I do believe the number of Bermudians that are currently on the high seas is in excess of 30. So it is not a small number of persons of which we're talking about on multiple different cruise ships. And not all of these persons are um, as uh, young as me. And so it is certainly something that's serious. It's certainly something that's happening, but we're continuing to work uh, with the United Kingdom government in this particular uh, regard. Uh, one of the things also which we have to state is that we're exploring is that we recognize um, I've been in con uh, conversations with the fellow premiers of the overseas territories. Yesterday, the premier of the Cayman Islands and I had a conversation discussion where I spoke to him about the program of which he's doing to um, bring his students home. Though they've closed their airport, they have additional flights just as we have to. They've closed their airport to regular scheduled commercial traffic. Um, they have additional flights, and there is some conversation discussion about possibly some more additional flights which may come on for all of the overseas territories as well. But that is something that we're going to assess the risk of and making sure that we um, have uh, appropriate um, protections in place to possible present, prevent any further possible importation of COVID-19 to our shores. Any problem? Any further questions? Go ahead. Um, I think in some instances they're okay. I don't think that it is an overall total disregard. And I applaud the businesses, and let me say this, because I think this is particularly important. I applaud the businesses that are being proactive. I applaud the businesses that are responding to the call to make sure that they either close temporarily, that they reduce their operations, that they have social distancing, that they are being responsible. And I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce and the private sector partners for working with the government to make sure that those things are being done on a regular basis. Because they recognize and understand that if they don't do that, the economy will be worse in the future. Nobody wants a complete and total shutdown in this country. We will have one if we have an uncontrolled outbreak. And that is what we are working incredibly hard to prevent. So I think that it is OK, but it can be better. And the reason why I recognize this is why we are putting out these new social distancing guidelines. It is incredibly painful to tell someone that they cannot have a funeral gathering with a large amount of people. But we must recognize and understand that in certain countries, that's where these large outbreaks actually happen. We don't want to tell people that they can't go to their gym, and that means, or beauty salons, my mom is in the beauty industry, but we have to make sure that we are being prudent in this regard. So what I would say is, by and large, I think, many people are paying attention, many people wash their hands, People are not shaking each other's hands, and people are getting uh, understanding that. But I don't want any of us to relax. COVID-19 is here. And if we do not do our part, we will be like other countries, and we do not want that to happen. So it is important. And I want to take this time and opportunity, of course, to thank all of our essential services workers, all those persons who have been working around the clock to repair this country. I want to say that Bermuda is strong. We will continue to be strong because we will remain united. And as long as we all work together to protect our economy, we will be just fine. But it requires all of us to play our part. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.